In this episode, we explore the extraordinary life of educator, politician, civic leader, and entrepreneur, William Madison Gooseneck McDonald. If you do a Google search for the first black millionaire in Texas, you'll come up with this guy. William Madison McDonald, born in 1866, just on the heels of the Emancipation Proclamation, to former slaves in a small community southeast of Terrell, Texas. His father had been a slave owned by Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest, who later became Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. As a student, McDonald worked for Kaufman County attorney and rancher Z.T. Adams, who took an interest in his young employee, lecturing him on business and law in between his work as a cattle herder. William finished high school in 1884. With financial assistance from Mr. Adams, he enrolled at Roger Williams University in Tennessee, one of the largest black colleges of the day. McDonald never completed his college degree, however, various school officials were highly impressed with his philosophical views, scholarly articles, and diligent work ethic. With only a high school diploma, he was named principal of one of the largest black schools in Kaufman County. McDonald was later awarded an honorary doctorate by Paul Quinn College in 1906. However, he declined to use the Ph.D. after his name, stating that he preferred for the world to judge him by his works in the uplift of his fellow man. McDonald served as a teacher and principal in the Kaufman County Schools for six or seven years, marrying his first wife, Alice Gibson, who was a teacher as well. By age 21, McDonald began to expand his interests beyond education, and he became active in local and state politics. The Republican Party, known as the Party of Lincoln, became the obvious choice for McDonald and most African Americans at that time. By 1891, McDonald had landed a position as corresponding secretary of the Texas Republican Party. He garnered much admiration as a passionate and gifted orator, traveling around the states, giving speeches to various organizations. Then he met the man who would change the trajectory of his life. Edward Robinson Green was an English-born, extremely wealthy railroad baron who relocated to Texas in 1892 to manage the Texas Midland Railroad, which his mother had just purchased. He was known as a good buddy of President William McKinley and for bringing the very first automobile to the state of Texas. Also becoming active in Texas politics, Green quickly struck up a friendship with William McDonald in 1896, and the two became part of the Black and Tan faction of the Texas Republican Party. Green and McDonald became unstoppable as political power brokers, and this partnership left McDonald with substantial wealth and notoriety. By the turn of the century, the man who was the son of slaves was widely recognized as the most powerful Negro politician in the South. William was described as a wiry but stately man, standing six feet tall, with chiseled features and piercing eyes. In 1896, a Dallas Morning News reporter mocked him as a goose-necked Negro with an Irish name. The name stuck and William 
Gooseneck McDonald accepted it completely unfazed. Around 1906, McDonald headed west to Fort Worth. He built this majestic three-story home using a black contractor on the corner of East Terrell and Tennessee Streets in the heart of the community now known as Historic Terrell Heights. While everyone marveled at the grandeur of this mansion, Gooseneck let it be known that it was specifically designed to replicate the house of slave owner George Martin, the man who had last owned McDonald's father before emancipation. Gooseneck settled into his luxurious life with second wife Helen, their young son William Jr., and a live-in servant, as noted on this 1910 census. Sadly, his only child, William Jr., died from pneumonia at age 20 while attending Howard University in D.C. Following Helen McDonald's death in 1926, Gooseneck went on to marry three more times, finally wedding wife number five, May Pearl Grayson, who was 50 years his junior. The couple united in the late 1930s and remained married until his death. In addition to his political pursuits, Gooseneck's fraternal memberships also provided a path to great wealth and community empowerment in Fort Worth. In the years following slavery, black fraternities and sororities became popular across the country as a means of networking and economic collaboration. Among many organizations, McDonald served faithfully in the Texas Black Masons for nearly half a century. It was his Masonic affiliation which allowed him to become manager of the state's first African-American bank, the Fraternal Bank and Trust Company. It was located inside the Masonic Temple Building, which McDonald built on 9th and Jones Street, downtown Fort Worth. This bank became the main depository of assets for the Black Masonic Lodges throughout the state. With a simple business philosophy, Gooseneck inspired consumer confidence by advertising that it was an independent entity owned and operated by blacks. In 1928, the bank had more than 1,000 depositors and cash flow exceeding $800,000. Realizing other community needs, McDonald established a drugstore in this building along with offices for three black physicians and a barbershop. The huge success of the Fraternal Bank and Trust gave Gooseneck plenty of cash to lend to local black entrepreneurs who rarely received loans from white banks. And he also bailed out some white institutions, saving them from collapse in the midst of the Great Depression. In the late 1920s, Gooseneck grew weary of politics and settled into focusing on his business and community development. He made sure that much of the wealth he had amassed from the white community made its way to circulate in the black community. While quietly attending foreclosure auctions on the steps of the Tarrant County Courthouse, McDonnell acquired a vast real estate portfolio which included these houses and many others on Fort Worth South Side. He then made sure that local black residents qualified for rental or mortgages to purchase these homes. As he continued to enrich the resources in Fort Worth's black community, McDonald ventured into the hospitality industry in the late 1920s when he built the Jim Hotel, a three-story, 50-room facility at 413 East 5th Street downtown. He named the hotel after his wife at the time, Jimmy Strickland, and this establishment quickly gained a reputation as the finest Negro Inn in Fort Worth. It was listed in the Green Book Guide as a safe place for black travelers, and it later included a cafe, beauty shop, and taxi stand. 
Under later black ownership in the 1930s, the venue blossomed into the center of African American music, culture, and Fort Worth. Although the hotel's check-in clientele remained strictly black, white music lovers headed for the gym's elegant club room after midnight to listen to real jazz by musicians such as Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, Count Basie, Cab Calloway, who jammed all night into the wee hours of the morning. In the midst of his community development, McDonald didn't forget the children. The first YMCA that African Americans in Fort Worth were allowed to visit was established in 1903. The rented space was cramped and substandard, barely serving the needs of the growing population of the city's minority youth. That all changed in the late 1930s when Gooseneck bought an old hotel located at 1600 Jones Street and donated it to the organization. This YMCA branch has now upgraded from Jones Street to a state-of-the-art facility further south, but it continues to bear the name of its most illustrious donor. This now remains as the only physical structure connected to Gooseneck's legacy, which is still thriving today. As you stand on the corner of 9th and Jones Street downtown today, you are not reminded of the empire McDonald built, known as Fort Worth's Black Business District. The bank, hotel, old YMCA, and even his personal residence are no more. What you will find here is the hustle and bustle of the Trinity Metro Station, Fort Worth's hub for bus and train travel in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. But if you decide to venture inside the corridor of this building, you will find that Fort Worth has not forgotten the man with the funny name who overcame the vestiges of slavery, Jim Crow, and racism to strive for equality and build a better life for his people. Along with many other figures in Tarrant County Black history, McDonald is part of this historic wall dedicated in 2002, which features a three-dimensional mural by local sculptor Paula Collins. The images of his mansion and businesses can now be appreciated by many generations to come. As McDonald's health began to decline, he rested comfortably in his Terrell Avenue mansion, surrounded by opulent furnishings and memories of a life well lived. The man known as the wealthiest Negro in Texas died peacefully on the 4th of July, 1950, at 84 years old. Always the planner, Gooseneck had given much thought when considering his final arrangements. He selected Oakwood Cemetery, which had a Negro section known as Old Trinity Cemetery. As per his specific instructions, his gravesite is on a hillside where this 38-foot-tall obelisk sits, looking down upon a North Main Street Fraternal Lodge Hall. But not his lodge. Gooseneck chose his eternal resting place in close proximity to the Fort Worth headquarters of the Ku Klux Klan where this desolate building remains today. To learn more about the legend of Gooseneck McDonald, visit the Lenora Rolla Heritage Center Museum, where black history lives. <laughs> ¶¶